There on the cross, crucified, all of my sin and my shame, it was washed by your mercy. You are the treasure I find, my reason for living, so let my life become a
You know, we want to take this opportunity to receive communion together. We've come to that part of our worship experience. And, you know, I can't think of anything really that uh, is more intimate in this setting than us coming into your home and, and you coming to ours in this way and taking communion together. Um, I'm lucky to have my girls here with me today, Sydney and Taylor. And, and uh, I, just wanted to, I just wanted to take a minute girls to just, uh, I was in the hospital with one of the ladies in our church just recently and she had something uh, happen to her. Uh, she got sick and, and ended up with pneumonia. She didn't have COVID or anything like that, but it was, it was pretty serious. And, and honestly, uh, she considered it a blessing because it showed up something else that she needed to be taken care of. And, uh, and God used it really to, to get her the right kind of help that she needed at the time. But when I went and visited her, she was just amazing. I, I just was so proud and excited and encouraged because she talked about, she said, you know, as I came into the hospital, I, I just felt like the Lord was telling me, spread the joy, uh, have joy, find ways to have joy. And she said, I just decided my perspective is gonna be, I'm gonna receive joy in this moment. I'm not gonna be, overwhelmed by this or overcome and she said so I started looking at ways to do that and looking at ways to you know thank people that were helping me and uh, have a positive attitude and just you know she said I read a scripture and she said I just came out with it just think positive and 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 good and 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 on the word of God and she said I just had that perspective and I mean her situation was extremely serious and it could have been even more so and she, she just said, I'm, I'm telling you, it'll sound weird to people or strange to people, but just the faith that that built in me, that having the right mentality and just deciding, choosing, I'm gonna have joy, even though the external situation is very negative, uh, I'm deciding to have joy. In other words, that internal conflict that happens in all of us when we're overwhelmed or we have issues, we have problems, uh, joy, the Bible talks about in Philippians that God will put joy in our hearts, will stand guard over our hearts. I just think that's so amazing that God's Holy Spirit will stand guard over our hearts. So all of that is going on externally can't tear us down internally. So I just want to encourage everybody, you know, as we receive communion this morning, what, what Jesus had to go through uh, for us was terrible, but thank God that he did. Thank God that he paid that penalty. And I think instead of us looking at the problems all the time, we need to start looking at the solutions. Instead of, instead of looking at the difficulties that have come in the last little bit in our nation and in our world and with everything that's gone on, 
instead of staring at that constantly, let's start staring at Jesus. Uh, instead of focusing on the negatives at our job or the people we don't like to work with or the kids that you do acting this way or that way, instead of focusing on the hard and difficult things, let's focus on Jesus. When we have a bad report or we have a problem or an issue, let's like just 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 like she did, just just get really serious and filled with faith and say, you know what? I'm going to look at Jesus instead of my problem. You know, I always look at the story of David and Goliath. We've all heard it, and you guys grew up listening to it. But, I mean, his perspective was everything. And that's what she was talking to me about. Perspective is everything. Like most people saw this giant that there's no way I'm, I'm fighting him. But David said, God's delivered a lion in my hands, a bear in my ears. What, 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 in my hands. Why, why would God not show up on this giant? So David wasn't like, I'm going to beat this giant because I'm so great. He was just like, I know God's going to take care of this. And uh, his perspective was, I can't miss him. He's too big. While other people were thinking, you know, he's too big to fight. David was saying he's too big to miss. And I just think it's a very powerful way to live. And I, I hope that's the way we are living and I want us to continue to live like that because joy is so important. And so when we take this communion today, I want us to think about what Jesus did, how he allowed himself to be broken for us, how he allowed himself to die, to be killed for us, and how he shed every bit of his blood for us so that we might have life. That if, if, if nothing ever happened good in our lives beyond that, that's enough to have joy for the rest of your life. Really, it is. So let's think that way. Let's receive. Jesus, we thank you for everything you've done for us. God, I'm just so moved uh, just in gratitude of all the goodness and grace that you've given us and all that you did. And Lord, if all you ever did for us, and we're th so thankful that you do so much more and you're involved in our lives today, but if all you ever did was go to that cross and pay the penalty for our sins and raise again from the dead so that we could have life, if that's all you ever did, that is enough to give us joy for eternity. So Father, forgive us when we don't have joy when we should. Forgive us when we let feelings and emotions overcome our life. Forgive us when we let external circumstances get become internal contention and conflict. Help us, Heavenly Father, to stand on your word and live in your joy. We thank you and we praise you. In Jesus' name, I bless these sacraments now in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. We know the word says that without the shedding of blood, there's no remission of sins. And God shed his blood so that our sins could be fully removed. In Psalms 103, it says that Jesus, God casts our sins from as far as the east is from the west. That means they're eternally gone. So we should thank Jesus this morning and have joy. We're no longer condemned, no longer damned. We are now whole and filled with life and will live eternally with Jesus. Father, we bless these sacraments now in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. You can receive. Thank you for joining us for communion today. God bless your family. Cause I got on the mountain He's still gone in the valley when things go wrong. He'll make them right. Cause the God of the good times, He's still gone in the bad time. The God of the Still my God in the night Cause I 
is a God on the mountain. He's still gone in the Cause the God of the good times He's still gone in the bad times The God of the day He's still God in the night And I thank Him for the mountains I thank Him for the valley Thank Him for all the storms He's brought me through. You know, if I never had one problem, I wouldn't know my God could solve them. I would never know what faith in my God could do. Cause the God on the mountain is still God in the valley when things go wrong. He'll make them right. Cause the God of the good time, He's still God in the The God of the day He's still God in the night The God of the day He's still God in the Good morning and welcome to our family Christmas worship experience. We are so excited that you and your family decided to join me and my family for Christmas worship experience this morning. You know, we just we just felt like we did this last year and, and uh, the year before and we just really felt strongly that it had a great impact and, and so we just wanted to do it. It's just a time where you can still worship, still spend your time uh, hearing the Word, Still, still pray together, still do communion together, but at the same time, you can be at home with your family. And the reason we do this is because, man, what a busy time it is. And I'm so thankful that we're coming together and people are giving their lives to the Lord throughout this month, this month of December. But wow, it has been full on, hasn't it? I mean, good Lord, feels like we've done something every single night. And so I know that you're probably feeling that same thing. And so we wanted to just take a morning have our worship experience in our homes with our families, but together as a church family. So thank you for joining us today. And any of you who may not be a regular member or a regular attendee at Summit Church, man, we just want to say welcome to you as well. And we're so glad that you've joined us today from wherever you've joined. And we just want to encourage you to make comment, connect with one of our pastors and leaders online there so that we can get to know you and serve you better. And so thank you so much for being a part as well. So today, you know, I just wanted to, Jen, Janae, my wife Janae and I, we were talking just recently and, you know, we're talking about, you, you have to, you can't help but talk about the year and a half uh, that we've gone through, year and a half to two years that we've gone through as a nation and, and the things that are still going on and the transitions and the changes and all of this kind of stuff. But uh, what we started the year with this year, because we really felt like, man, uh, we, we feel like people were down, they were discouraged, and so we, we, we started this concept called Spread the Joy. And so we started it last December, really, at this worship experience, and then it carried on into the first part of the year, and it really was a great ministry. I mean, people were going out of their way to do things to bring joy to other people, getting them gifts, buying them flowers, doing you know errands for different people, just finding ways to make a difference in someone else's life to bring them joy. And it, we heard testimony after testimony after testimony of people whose lives were literally impacted by this. 
And so I just want to say thank you so much, Summit Church, for being a church that embraces joy and that you didn't let everything get you down, but you just held the, 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 uh, held the faith and just kept pressing forward. And I just want to say that it's okay when things get us down, but we don't want to stay down. And that's what's so good about the body of Christ. The Bible literally says that we should gather together. We shouldn't forsake that. We should come together for that very purpose because it's good to edify one another, to build each other up, to give strength to one another spiritually and in the faith. So as you come into my home today and I come into yours, I just want to continue that theme. I want to talk to you today about uh, an idea, kind of a focus on the angels uh, in the Christmas story and what they said and what they did. I want to talk to you for the next just few minutes uh, about the idea, joy to the world, joy to the world. Let's read our text uh, in our scripture text in Luke chapter 2, verse 8 through 14 in the NIV. It reads this way, and you should read along with me. Get your whole family and read along as it comes up on the screen. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. <laughs> I love that scripture. But the angel said to them, don't be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy. Let's all read that again. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all people. It's a direct reference to not only Jews, but also to Gentiles. Today, in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah. Listen to these direct statements. Uh, he is the Messiah of the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find the baby wrapped in clothes and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of the heavenly hosts appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth. Peace to those in whom His favor rests. So let's just take a moment and let's just kind of Break that scripture down and understand what's happening. These are just some shepherds that are they're living out in this field. They've got all their flocks. They've set up uh, there, uh, and uh, they're just watching and tending to their flocks. And all of a sudden, out of nowhere, an angel appears and begins to declare the word of the Lord to them. And as he did, the Bible talks about, if you really read that, it, it says that the, the light shone all around them. So here's this angel shows up and then this glory of God, this light, supernatural light just starts invading their presence. I mean, the Bible said they were terrified. Now I can imagine if that happened to me, that there might be some terror involved. I mean, that, that was not just some thing. And you'll find out a little bit more about that you know, uh, in, in a minute when I talk to you about this, but I, I, want, I want you to understand that was not just some little occurrence, little happening. I mean, you didn't just see that every day. And if you can imagine, it wasn't in a temple. It wasn't in some kind of setting where worship was going on. It was just some shepherds guarding some sheep. But I believe there's a reason why God wanted to send that message through shepherds. And I believe there's a reason why God called so many shepherds. David was a shepherd. Abraham was a shepherd. Moses was a shepherd. Go on and on and on. Jesus called himself the great shepherd. Because there's an analogy being made constantly about the idea of us being God, the sheep of God's pasture and him being our good shepherd. And he's just sending this message over and over and over again. I am good and I love you and I will care for you and protect you and lead you and guide you. And you have to understand at this point and this time, uh, th th when that angel spoke and that light flashed and this message came forward, then all of a sudden the heavens were filled with angels. I mean, if you can imagine this moment of just, I mean, just use your imagination to think about this angel giving this message and then all of a sudden the heavens fill up with angelic hosts and just giving glory to God, praising His name, singing songs. I mean... Those shepherds must have been just elated and just shocked and, and just in wonder of the goodness and grace and presence of God. You know, I believe God still does miraculous things. I think we sell ourselves short when we don't really follow the leading of the Holy Spirit or remember how powerful God is through the presence of His Holy Spirit. And I believe He still does miracle things. I, I still believe He gives dreams and visions and prophecies and and words of wisdom, and words of knowledge, and gifts of healing, and gifts of faith. I still believe that God does miracles and changes things. 
And I believe for it every day and I pray for it every day that God will heal someone or set someone free or, you know, grow, give us a great harvest of souls at Summit Church and, and all the churches preaching the Word of God and that, that good things will begin to happen in people's lives and that no matter what the world looks like, God is good and He's doing good things. You have to remember too, they were anticipating this event. I mean, there were, there, there were a lot of things said about this coming and here these angels came and they said, hey, we're bringing some good news to you and we're bringing, uh, you know, not just good news, but we're bringing uh, joy to you. It's like God didn't just say, I'm going to give you something to have joy about. I believe God literally deposited joy on this planet by putting Jesus here because Jesus is the personification of joy and peace and faith and love and goodness and grace and righteousness. And, you know, they were all thinking about this event and they were anticipating that this event, the, the, the Jews were, this advent of the, the arrival of the Messiah. And in this passage of Scripture, the angels are very clear. This child is the Messiah. And this, is, this shall be a sign to you. You're going to find him in a, in a manger in swaddling clothes. You have to remember, too, there were hundreds, if not thousands of years between some of the prophets and prophecies and the actual happening of Jesus being born in Bethlehem. Let, let me just go through some with you and help you understand that God took men's lives and used them to show us the Messiah was coming. And not just that, but we understand, and I'm going to show you here how they prophesied it hundreds of years before, if not thousands of years before, some of them, and then we see it actually come to pass in Jesus' life in the New Testament. And, and we need to understand that the odds of that happening are astronomical. It, it just can't even be described almost or defined how astronomical it would be for even 10 prophecies to come true, which I'm going to give you 10. 10 prophecies to come true in the life of one person, that would be unbelievable in number uh, in terms of the odds. In the overall scope, though, of prophecy pertaining to Jesus, not just His birth, and that's what I'm going to talk about, but about Him coming, about what He would do when He got here, about how He would be born, how He would die, where He would live, all of that, hundreds of years later, thousands of years before, excuse me, and it was amazing to see that come. There were over 300, 300 prophecies. I don't know how people can doubt the Bible. I really can't. I really don't. And I, don't, I also don't understand how people can doubt that Jesus Christ is the Messiah. So here's a prophecy in Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6. It says, for, us to, for, for to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government shall be put upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. In Isaiah, it goes on to say, The Spirit of the Sovereign Lord is on me because the Lord has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to claim freedom to the captives, and release from darkness from the prisoners. In Isaiah 61, the fulfillment of that was in Luke chapter 4, verse 18. Christ Himself fulfilled these scriptures. He went in and He read this in the, in the church. He said, The Spirit of the Lord is on me because He has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom to the prisoners and recovery of sight for the blind to set the oppressed free. And when He read that in church, then He said, This day, this has, been, this has come to pass in your hearing and in your sight. Jesus literally went into the temple and read, I'm the guy this is talking about. There was another prophecy in Isaiah chapter 7, verse 14. It says, Therefore the Lord Himself will give you a sign. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son and will call Him Emmanuel. It, it, the fulfillment of that was in Matthew chapter 1, verse 23. It said, Mary received the same prophecy when the angel Gabriel visited her and we see it fulfilled clearly through Scripture. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. So he's telling Mary, listen, Mary, you're the virgin, and you're going to conceive by the Holy Spirit, and you're going to give birth to the Son of God, and you're going to call him Emmanuel, God with us, and you're going to call him Jesus, and, and uh, he shall save his people from their sins because it's a derivative of the name Joshua, or Yeshua, which means Savior of the world. There was a prophecy in Micah chapter 5, verse 2. It says, The Lord says, Bethlehem, you might not be an important town in the nation of Judah, but out of you will come a ruler over Israel for me. His family line goes back to the early years of your nation. It goes all the way back to the days of long ago. The fulfillment, Christ Jesus was born in Bethlehem 
just as the prophecies foretold. Matthew chapter 2, verse 10, After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea during the time of King Herod, the wise men came from the east to Jerusalem. There was a prophecy in Numbers chapter 24, which is going to be way back when the Torah was written. I see him, but not now. I behold him, but not near. A star shall come forth from Jacob, and a scepter shall rise from Israel and shall crush through the forehead of Moab and tear down the sons of Sheth. Fulfillment was in Matthew chapter 2. It said, God places the star in the sky to lead the Magi to Christ so that they might worship him. Now, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, behold, the wise men came from the east in Jerusalem saying, Where is he who is born king of the Jews? For we saw his star in the east and have come to worship him. I know we think about a lot of times that that was like three men because they brought three different types of gifts, but that would probably have been a whole host of people that were considered to be uh, wise men that studied the stars and they knew of this prophecy and, and it was been fulfilled right in front of their eyes. There was a prophecy in Psalms chapter 72, verse 10 through 11. It says, May the kings of Tarshish of distant shores bring tri tribute to him. May the kings of Sheba and Saba present him gifts. May all kings bow down to him and all nations serve him. And the fulfillment was in Matthew chapter 2, verse 11. It says, The wise men who visited Jesus brought him gifts and bowed to worship him. On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshiped him. Then they opened up their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Very valuable gifts. Very generous giving. There was another prophecy in Psalm chapter 72, verse 9. It says, May the, de the desert tribes bow before him and his enemies lick the dust. In the fulfillment, the angels came to the shepherds to tell them the good news of Christ's birth, and they hurried to find him and worship him. In uh, uh, Luke chapter 2, verse 12, and Luke 15 through 17 says this, This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in clothes and lying in a manger. And when the angels had left him and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about the child. It can go on and on and on. I'm just pulling out 10 and you can look at them in the notes later. I don't want to go through all of them, but I'm just telling you there were prophecy after prophecy that were fulfilled. Not only, they, not only were they prophesied, but they were fulfilled in Jesus, specifically where he was born, specifically to whom he was going to be born, specifically that shepherds would come and worship him, specifically that wise men would come from the east and give gifts and bow down before him. It is so amazing and there was such anticipation that this would happen someday. They didn't know when it would happen, but here it was happening right in front of their eyes. How sad it is that many of them did not receive it or believe it. But man, what a powerful moment of joy. Can you imagine what Mary must have felt, what Joseph must have felt, what those shepherds must have felt, what the angelic host must have been experiencing? Oh, they knew this day was coming. They knew it from the foundation of the earth when God started the plan. And here it is, time for this to happen. I can't imagine what heaven must have been like. I can't imagine the rejoicing, not only there in, in that shepherd's field, but all over heaven as people were worshiping and praising God and so excited about what God was doing. You know, during the intertestamental period, there was about 400 years between the Old Testament and the New Testament. And it was a hard and a violent time. It may have felt to many like, where is God? God is not speaking to us anymore. His voice is silent. Where are the voices, the prophetic voices that have spoken in times past? It was an anxious time. But then God spoke. He spoke to Mary and He spoke to Joseph and He spoke to the shepherds and He spoke to the wise men. He spoke words of life and joy. And He sent messengers to give us good news that would bring joy. That word joy is to delight in, to have happiness about, to have peace and assurance in. It's not some mere emotion. It is a true assurance and peace and happiness and delight in the life that God gives us and the life through Jesus that He sent us. You know, He was about to deposit joy into the earth. That's what was going on here when He told Mary, you're going to have 
the son and you're going to name his name Jesus. They had heard about it. They had prayed about it. They had longed for it. And here it was, the good news. Heaven's joy came down. It wasn't just the advent of Jesus. It was the advent of the kingdom of God. You know, it wasn't the defeat of mere human governmental oppression with the Romans and, 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 the, and the, before that, the, the Babylonian kingdom and the Medes and the Persians and all of these different people who had, who had oppressed the Israeli people. And there's attempts still being made right now to oppress the Israeli people. And it's interesting to me, but God has blessed them. And everyone who blesses them, He blesses. And everyone who curses them, He curses. That's what the Bible says is a prophecy in, 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 in the Old Testament, and we need to take heed to it. But it wasn't the defeat. When Jesus came, it wasn't just the defeat of governmental oppression or national oppression from one nation to the other. It was the defeat of the regime of Satan being brought to an end, the authority of the enemy to be able to run things and, and, and run rough, rough shot over this earth. Um, and now his earthly regime was being defeated and the light was shining in the darkness and joy had arrived. I mean, think about that, the heaviness that was lifted. And that's, that, that's the joy that we can have in Christ I mean, that hasn't changed. I want us to get that today. It hasn't changed. Jesus provided that joy for us. He, divided, he provided peace for us in the midst of the storm, in the midst of difficulties. He's given us good news. He's deposited joy into our lives. I am so grateful today, church, that we don't have to be sad all the time and defeated. And, and, and I listened to a guy preaching a message at a funeral not long ago, and he said something so powerful. He said, Christians are the only people that can grieve and have joy at the same time. That, that we grieve, but we don't grieve as those who have no hope because our faith is in God and our peace is in God and our joy is in God. Then everything has come through Christ. Everything should point back to Christ. He is so good to us and He is so loving and so great to us. I mean, the Bible is replete with this idea of joy. I mean, God gave us the joy of victory. The Bible says in James chapter 1, verse 2, Consider it pure, pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds. He gave us the joy of God's nature. The Bible says in Galatians chapter 5, verse 22, But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness. Listen, the very nature of God is deposited into us when we come into relationship with Him and it changes us from the inside and gives us the characteristics of God in our own life. It's fruit that's born out of that relationship from the Spirit of God. He bears the fruit of joy in our lives and that joy gives us victory when things aren't so good. And when we go through difficulties, when we go through problems, when we go through issues, listen, don't worry. It's going to be okay because God is gives us joy in the place of hardship and difficulty and sadness and bereavement. God gives us joy. He gives us not only joy and, uh, uh, and not only the victory of joy and the joy of God's nature, but He gives us the fullness of joy. Not just a little bit of joy, but He wants our joy to be complete, to be full, to be mature. In John chapter 15, 11, it says, I have told you this so that your, your joy, or excuse me, that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. He, he gives us the joy of faith. 1 Peter 1, 8 says, Though you have not seen Him, you love Him. And even though you do not see Him now, you believe in Him and are filled with inexpressible and glorious joy. He, he's saying that we have, we have joy in faith. When we believe in God, even though we can't see Him, and we believe in Jesus, even though we know He's real and He's true and He's, and He's good, we can't see Him. The faith in that gives us joy, inexpressible joy and inexpressible hope. What a beautiful and wonderful relationship we have with God. And then He gives us consistent joy. He tells us to have consistent joy. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 16, He says, always rejoice. Always live out your joy. He gave us the seed of joy. Psalms 126 verse 5. Those who sow with tears will reap with songs of joy. Listen, when you are a believer and you walk with God, I'm just sensing the anointing of the Holy Spirit on this message right now because I believe there are so many of you need to hear this. Don't let go of your faith. Don't let go of your hope. 
when you're a believer and you walk with God, there are going to be times that it's hard. There have been times over the last year and a half it's been hard. We have felt overwhelmed. Some of us are still feeling that. Anxiety has risen up in us. Listen, come on. Don't let it get you. Don't let it overwhelm you. Even though you've sowed tears of, of, of uh, uh, sorrow or you've cried over things that have been hard or you've had difficulties in your life or you've lost someone, listen to me. When you're a believer, those, those tears become seeds that go into the soil of the Spirit and a harvest comes back. You know what that harvest is? Joy. Joy. God will give you joy in place of your sadness. God will give you joy in place of the hardships and the difficulties. And He gives us the declaration of joy. He tells us you should declare your joy. Psalm 66 verse 1 says, Shout for joy. Shout for joy. And then he goes, L- listen, I heard somebody say this the other day. There are some walls, just like the children of Israel going around jo- uh, uh, Jericho, there are some walls in your life that are not going to come down until you learn how to shout. We need to get our shout back. We need to quit. We need to quit being so timid about our Christianity. We need to quit being oppressed in our own spirituality and know that we've been given joy and we need to shout our joy to God. Shout for joy to God. He says, all the earth. We need to shout for joy to God. Sometimes you just need to start praising God in the middle of your storm, in the middle of your problem, in your middle of your circumstance. Just start saying the name of Jesus and just start praising the name of Jesus and shout your joy. When everything's trying to make you sad and everything's trying to get you down, you just need to say, no, I love Jesus and Jesus loves me and God is good and He's given me joy unspeakable and full of glory and I'm not going to be defeated. I'm going to be a victor and not a victim. I'm going to be on top and not uh, below. I'm, I'm going to be ahead and not behind. I'm, I'm going to be the, the head and not the tail. I'm going to live in the victory that God has given me because I am a believer and I walk with Him and live with him shout for joy all the earth listen right now you should get your family together right now you should gather hands and you should just say praise jesus in a shout i don't care if it feels weird i don't care if it feels funny or awkward you know what we need to stop worrying about funny and awkward and start doing the things god tells us to do and watch those walls in your kid's life fall down and watch those walls of addiction fall down watch those walls of pain fall down and walls of confusion fall down and walls of deception and 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 lostness in your family watch it start falling down as you begin to shout for joy to god here are some truths anxiety stress anger frustration cannot rule in our lives when we choose joy and gratitude there was a research study done that literally says that you cannot be grateful and anxious at the same time that literally when you have a grateful heart anxiety is suppressed in your life because it says something about I'm trusting God and I believe God and I'm just thankful for the life I have. I'm thankful that the air I get to breathe. Come on, joy. We can choose joy. Uh, The Bible gives us another truth. The joy of the Lord is our strength. It can be said two different ways. That, 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 That the joy of the Lord, the joy that we get from God is supernatural and it gives us strength. It also could be said this way, that it's God's joy to give us strength. Either way, joy is a, 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 a seed that grows up a harvest of strength in our lives. Don't let doubt and fear and anxiety and sadness and depression and discouragement take over you. You serve the living God. You serve the risen Savior. Come on. The joy of the Lord is your strength. Three, we know another truth is this. The third truth, joy is powerful. It's an internal force. It's a powerful internal force that can sustain you even during difficult external battles. Listen, you're going to face some stuff. The Bible says in John chapter, uh, I can't remember the text right now, but in, in the end of John, it says this, it says, in the world we shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I've overcome the world. You're going to have some hard stuff, but have joy. Be of good cheer. Have joy because I've overcome the world. You don't have to be subject to it. You don't have to be defeated by it. It doesn't have to get over on you. Come on. Joy is a powerful internal force that can sustain you even when there are difficult external battles to fight. I'm going to give you some practical ways to express your joy. Number one, praise. 
Guys, listen. I believe in the power of the Holy Spirit. I believe in God's miraculous power to get involved in our situations. I've, I've read it and studied it in the Word. I've experienced it in my own life. I've been doing this too long and I've seen too many miraculous things to start thinking or preaching or acting like we want to be embarrassed of the Holy Spirit or we want to be uh, uh, too intellectual that we can't experience the power and presence of God. Listen, I'm telling you, praise works. I'm telling you, God shows us a, it's a principle and a pattern in the Scripture that when we learn how to praise God, if we want to practically express our joy, it's all about praising God. It's all about lifting up the name of Jesus. Second thing is trust, listen, and obey. I'm going to teach more and more on this because I feel like we're living in a time where God needs us to be obedient. And not just obedient to the Scriptures, but obedient, always obedient to the Scriptures. And everything we do should be based on the Scriptures. But we should also be obedient to the leading of the Holy Spirit. When the Holy Spirit says, I want you to do this, or He impresses on our heart, I want you to talk to this person, I want you to take your family here, I want you to switch jobs, or I want you to do this ministry, or I want you to take on this greater commitment to the kingdom, I, I want us to hear that, and I want us to obey. Listen, I'm telling you, that's where joy is. When you get in that fulfilled place of listening to the voice of God, trusting it, and acting in obedience to it. The third thing, the third way to practically express your joy is to share. Give your joy to someone else. There's a lot of people in pain right now. Matter of fact, I've, I've experienced so many people that have had so many needs in the last month that it has almost overwhelmed me. Just personally, people that I've come in contact with and just hurting, just depressed, just discouraged, just overwhelmed by everything today. And there are those who are struggling uh, with poverty. There are those who are struggling with family breakdowns. There are those who are struggling with loss of jobs. There are those who are struggling with physical problems and issues. There are those who are struggling because they've lost loved ones. And you know what? We need each other. We need someone to come alongside us and give us joy. There's many times in my life that it's been amazing God sent somebody by me and just lift me. I didn't, e I didn't even know I needed it, but God would speak it in my life and I would go, oh my God, you don't, I would tell the person, you don't know. You don't know what that did for me. That little gift or that little card or just that word or that prayer you prayed, you don't know what that did. You've been there. I've been there. The question is though, will we be on the other side of that? and bring our joy to someone else. You know, it's our job as Christians, as believers, to do that. So praise is a practical expression of your joy. Trust, listen, and obey is a practical expression of your joy. And thirdly, share, give your joy to someone else. Don't let someone who has no joy be left in that state. Don't let someone who's lost their joy because of external circumstances that have overwhelmed their life. Don't leave them there. The Bible says if we as believers have something that someone else needs, we should willingly share because that's what we do. That's who we are. I want to just help us to all understand as I close today that God didn't just give us good news that would make us happy and give us a little spiritual buzz. He actually deposited the substance of joy into this planet in the body of Jesus Christ. And that Savior of ours, that elder brother of ours, that wonderful Lord and Savior who humiliated Himself and came as a human being, a baby in a manger, not in a palace. The King of Kings became a humble carpenter to give us a message to reach us and identify with us, to help us to understand how much He loves us and care for us. And then He used His joy to fuel Himself to go to that cross and to die for our sins, take our place and penalty for our sins, and then raise again from the dead. He, that was all fueled by joy because the Bible tells us in Hebrews that 
He endured the cross, despising the shame for the joy that was set before Him. Why should you have joy today? Because Jesus' joy is you. The reason that He went to that cross, the reason he it was the joy that was set before Him. What was that joy? Knowing that what He was about to do was going to provide salvation for every single human being that would believe it. You're His joy. And He wants to give you joy. So I'm encouraging you today. Gather your family. and Talk about the good things. Talk about what you're grateful for. Stop listening to the negative. Turn it off. Get away from it. Don't let your kids be inundated by it. And, and, and start talking positive. Don't, don't, don't keep bitterness inside. Don't keep pain and, 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 and hurt and depression and discouragement inside. Get rid of it by beginning to declare the wonderful works of the Lord and, 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 and walk in His victory and walk in His joy. It's like the Apostle Paul told us in Philippians, rejoice in the Lord always. Always and again and again I say rejoice. It's the most redundant scripture in the Bible because the word rejoice means to have joy over again. So he's saying have joy over again and over again and over again. And when you think you've had enough joy, have some more joy and rejoice some more because we serve a living Savior who has given us through His Spirit His own joy. When we have a relationship with Jesus, we have that joy. When we choose to listen to His Spirit and do His will, we have that joy. It combats all the negatives and it difficults all that, uh, excuse me, it defeats all the difficulties and the negatives that we face in life. So as we close 2021 and as we enter 2022, let's do it. Church, let's do it with joy. Come on, turn to your family right now. Smile at them. Hug them around the neck. Smile at them. Tell them you love them. Not some earthly joy that's mere emotion that lasts only a moment, but heavenly joy. That is the person of Jesus Himself deposited in our lives through His precious Holy Spirit. And let's go into this new year regardless of any circumstances. Let's go in depending totally on Jesus. Let's trust Him. And let's express His joy, that, that, that calm assurance that gives us peace, that overcomes all internal conflict. Uh, it calms the storm on the outside because it cancels the storm on the inside. The angels didn't just bring news, folks. They brought good news. And regardless of all the stinking bad news that we hear every minute of the day, it's still true today this good news, this good news of the gospel of our precious Jesus. We are not confined by this earthly kingdom. We are citizens of the kingdom of God. So I just say this with all of my heart. I know Christmas is over, but Merry Christmas to you. And we declare joy over you and your family and the true, true spiritual Christ-like joy we pray that it will erupt in your family and that the blessings of God will reside on you and be expressed through you every single day. I love you. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you so much for your joy. I thank you for this family that you've given us, this wonderful church family, Summit Church, and everybody who's a part of it and everybody who may be joining us today that that aren't even really member or an attendee, that, Lord, they're welcome at Summit Church. I pray, Heavenly Father, God, that you'll use this message today to encourage and to strengthen and help us to know you've given us joy and all we have to do is receive it and accept it and then we can express it. And I just pray that we'll walk in victory, we'll walk in wholeness, we'll walk, walk in health, we walk in life. And that, Lord, 2022 will be a joyous year. Regardless of circumstances, we will be filled with joy. And we will express your joy to every single person we come in contact with. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, I just want to say today, if you don't know Jesus as your personal Savior, and you need this joy, this peace, this assurance in your life, then I want to invite you to come to know Him. And there are people praying for you. 
And all you have to do, they'll tell you what to do on the screen. I'm not going to try to explain it to you. They'll give you a link or they'll tell you what to do. And, and, and then they will contact you. One of our pastors or staff will get connected with you and pray a prayer with you so that you can make a decision and then tell you what your next steps are as a believer. I'd encourage you to do that. Jesus loves you and He cares about you. And He wants to, you to be a part of His family. And He wants to give you joy. Well, thanks so much for being with us here at our family worship experience online. And, and I, I hope it ministered to you and blessed you like it did us. And I just want to say, uh, I want to encourage you to be a giver. You know, I think one of, the, one, one of the things that we always have to remember is that God is a generous God. And we want to have His nature, so we want to be generous. And especially generous to His kingdom. You know, God has given us this kingdom to be responsible for and to, to steward here on the earth. And I think back, honestly, the Christmas story, I think back to the wise men. And I think about um, how they came and they gave gifts. The first thing they did when they saw that baby in a manger, the Bible says they knelt down to worship him and then they gave gifts. I think there's an interesting correlation between worship and giving. Because worship in and of itself, the act of worship is giving. In other words, it's, it's giving of yourself, giving of your, your heart, giving a, you're surrendering your whole self to God in worship when you worship Him, when you sing, when you praise, when you, uh, you know, pray. All of that is worship, but it's a giving of self. And that's why when we give, we don't give out of some kind of obligation. We give out of worship because giving is the nature of God. Generosity is the nature of God. And when we give to God, we're literally worshiping Him. We're saying how great you are. That's what the wise men did. So it could be said, I know it may be like a cutesy thing to say, but it really truly could be said that the wisest people are people who are generous to the kingdom of God. The wisest people are people who are givers because people who are givers and people who are generous are, are creating this atmosphere in their life, this faith covenant with God, where He is operating in their life, even in the financial realm. And so I want to encourage you, be wise today and be generous and give to God, not out of obligation, but out of a heart of worship, telling Him you love Him and you care for Him. You can see the simple, safe, and secure ways to give. Thank you for doing that. This is the last time we're going to get to worship together before 2022, so I want to give you a blessing going out of this year and really speak this faith over your life and over your family. So if you just prepare yourself to receive, I, I wanna declare this over you. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord make His face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord turn His countenance towards you and give you peace in the mighty name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And I just declare that you are like a tree it's planted by the rivers of water and that you will bring forth fruit in your season and your leaves will not wither and whatsoever you do, it shall prosper in the name of Jesus. Amen. God bless you. Now go change the world.